So Glenn. Yeah. Do you know the difference between squareness and parallel? Uh, not really. Uh, you think it is? I mean, squareness, T square, parallels. Right, right, right. Horizon, yeah. Parallel. Oh, okay. Square. Yeah. Pretty basic, right? Yeah. It is. But what does it have to do with the machine? Well, that's a good question, because <laughs> when you get into the machine, which we're going to show you all about the machine. I know this one. What the squareness and parallelism is all about, because this looks simple, right? Very simple. It is simple in concept. But we're taking it to another level. We're taking squareness and parallelism to a completely different level. We're going to show how squareness and parallelism is critical in a machine with this kind of an accuracy. In fact, you may recall you and I started working on this machine when we took it out of service. Right. And we decided to put it back into service. But it doesn't reset itself, no? No, no, it does not. <laughs> and why did we take it out of service? Well, the, the word on the, uh, the, with the guys back there was that, right. well, this thing's not grinding round, I think, or it's not grinding, okay. grinding straight, I think, or it's not grinding parallel. I wasn't getting a straight answer from anybody. But anyway, right. we took it out of service. So I said, I think we need to find out ourselves really what the answer is. Is it grinding correctly or not? So in okay. order to do that, we've, we've got to go through this entire machine from beginning, from top mm -hmm. to bottom. Yep. And we've got to find out where the issues are. Now keep in mind that a jig grinder is probably one of the most accurate machines ever made. Okay. As far as pr providing a precision part and making it within tenths, if not millions. Not to mention it's a big machine. It's a big machine. Big machine. It's, it looks like a big drill press or a big bridge board, yeah. right? But it's not. It still it's, won't drill though, will it? <laughs> no, it could. You, I guess it, no, not really, but I okay. guess it could. So, how do we figure this out? How do we find out if the machine is the problem or is the operator the problem? So many times I found out that the operator is really the problem and not the machine. There's no like little bubbles to level bubbles on there or anything like that? Well, they're, they're, you can do that, but that doesn't really tell you too much. I mean, yes, it can tell you if it's level with the earth, <laughs> but you know, we don't really, we're not concerning ourselves with that so much. Uh -huh. So the operators have told me that there's a problem. Okay. And they haven't identified it clearly. I don't know what the problem is. So we're going to find out. So we're going to take this machine piece by piece, yeah. item by item, and we're going to check it. And we're going to show whether this machine is really the problem or, or was the it the operator. Operators. That's right. Nine? No. 99 times out of 100, it's not the machine. The machine. I have operators come to me all the time and tell me this isn't right. And I say, why? And they, well, I don't know. Is it because they look at only one aspect of it? Or? or or maybe they don't understand. I mean, give them the benefit of the doubt. They really okay. don't understand what the issues are and what the complexities are. Sure. Let, let me give you an example. This machine, as you know, yep. we took this oh, yeah. X and Y axis, and we took it all apart, cleaned it, put it back together, we put fresh felts in it, we lubed it, we got it all straightened out, right? Correct. Then you may recall we took this riser off or this table off. Yeah. And we took that and I took it over the surface grinder and unfortunately- 100 pounds, yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> unfortunately, Jim, you didn't get a chance to video that, right? Correct. So, but I remember we took it over to our brand new Okamoto that we just got that grinds within millions. And I said, guys, put this on the surface grinder and give it a dust across there and let's see what we got. So what, had you know, a dip in it? Well, you would think so, right? You'd yeah. think there'd be well, a dip in I it, mean, right? Because you always constantly Because it wears. Well, it's right? wearing. You know, your sliding parts it's on and off. It, it should wear. Uh-uh. Yeah. It had a bubble. It was wow. high in the middle. About a thousandths and a half. Big deal on a bridge port, right? Yeah. A thousand and a half, that's nothing. Right. I, I, who cares on a bridge port? It could be two, three, four, Is five thousand. Would the heat make it warm? But. Well, maybe that. We think maybe with the T-slots in there, when you're clamping at it, it, that it's possible oh, that it pulled that. it up. I, I, I don't know. That. Or just maybe the maybe the uh, the metal just settled over the years. Who knows? Yeah. But in any case, we know that it was not flat. That could have been part of the problem. So we had to make this flat, and we had to then remount it on the machine. Remember, you helped remount it. Right. Right. So now we got it mounted on the machine. Now we d we still don't know if it's square or parallel with this head, and this head has two two parts in it that move in a upward and downward position. This is the main part, 
And there's a lever right here, as you can probably see, yeah. with crank that you move it, and there's a lock right here. You loosen the lock, and that takes this whole assembly and moves it up or down. There is also the part here that actually does the moving when you're jig grinding, and only this section goes up and down. And it only moves about three or four inches, maybe a little more than that, but somewhere in that area. So to get it in position, you roughly bring this down to where you think you want to be. Then you make your final adjustment here for the stroke, as we call it. But what if this thing is tipped one way or another, or that yeah. is, or if it's not square? Remember, this this mm -hmm. part is attached to the base of the machine, so it is solid. Okay, but now what my so you you're taking assuming this is level. This is definitely we're level. gonna make sure you put a level on it. We're gonna make sure that it's that it's. Okay. Parallel with these parallel. ways. Remember this table okay. goes in yep. and out. It goes mm -hmm. right left and in and out So we want to make sure that it's parallel with these ways. Okay, so let's go over here for a second and over here As you can see This is the part that goes up and down and there's a shield that, that protects the ways you can kind of see the ways up here Yeah, so if we move this down, it's possible that it's not square with a table. It's possible that it's like this or it's like that. So we need to find out if that's square and parallel. So one of the exercises that we went through, and Jim, did we, did we video that or no? Uh, we, video, we videoed you uh, scraping it. We videoed you tramming it. Sweep? Okay, so we did sweeping it. Okay. Yeah, yeah you did sweep okay. it. Yeah, I so, we came, so we put an indicator on here, and we came around here, and we swept the table to see if this column is square and parallel with the table. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, you, you put the a on. You did it with a box parallel. Correct. We, we, well, we did it two ways. We did it actually down here, and then we raised it up six inches yep. and did the box parallel on the top. That told us, the first one told us if we were square in this position, but when we raised the head up, if it's worn up here, it might not be square again. Sure. And, and I was happy that it was within a couple tenths. It looked good. Two tenths. So, a couple tenths is pretty close. Now, again, if you're talking about a bridge port, it doesn't make any difference. You can be a couple thousands off because for the type of machining that you do on a bridge port, as a rule, you're yeah. not doing close work like you are here. So tents here are critical and they can be cumulative. Okay. You can be off two tents this way and two tents here and two tents there. Next thing you know, you're off a thousands. You're off not going to yeah. work when you're trying to hold tolerances within millions or within a couple of tents. It's not going to work. So we did all that. So we also, you may recall, we had we had a blown uh, uh, seal in here yep. in this part in the uh, piston that moves this head up and down. So we had to pull that apart, and I think we got a video of that, right, Jim? We do. Yeah, we so we, we oh, replaced yeah. that seal. We got that going. Uh, so we swept it, got the seal going. Uh, what else? Oh, we also found that the that the motor that operates this head that oscillates it uh, was, was out of phase. It had a, had a leg missing. A leg missing. So, uh, so there's three phases coming in. One of them was dead, so it was humming. Okay. And we didn't know if it, if, the, if it was the motor that was a problem or if this cable was frozen up that mm. sends the power. We didn't know what it was. Found out it was a simple solution, merely a fuse. Phaser, was, a, phaser was on lock. That's right. Phaser <laughs> was on lock, right. And, and also, we replaced the shielding. Remember this had this black yep. apron on here? Oh, yeah. We put a clear apron on it, which I like better because you can see the controls. Sure. And uh, remember that this is a readout that reads within 50 millionths. This is not a one-tenth readout, it's a 50 millionths readout, which That's with this kind of accuracy, intense. you're gonna need. So you're five digits over, which is very cool. And that works fine. So we know that that's good. We know that the head is now square and parallel. We're getting close to a point now where I think we'll be able to grind apart and see what it's gonna look like. And I, I, I feel now we should be able to go back and we're gonna show you what kind of parts we're gonna grind on here. Can you get a shot of this, Jim? Sure. Let's call it the what? A well, we call it a shoe or a, a shoe, foot, foot, and it, it kind of it goes here in the middle like this. So when you raise and lower this, so the distance, this hole's got to be ground within a, a tenth or so, and we have to hold from the center line of this hole to this face has to be held within about two tenths. So not only do you have to have the size within two tenths, you've got to have this edge to the center line within a couple tenths. That's a jig grinding job. Wow. Okay. That's why you need a jig grinder. The other one that's kind of a challenge is the base of the sign plate. These ears likewise need to be ground, and this has to be perfectly parallel between this hole and that hole, because when you put that shaft in, if it's off one way or another, it's gonna bind or it might not even go in. 
So we have to grind this one, which means the jig grinder is going to be way up here. We're going to grind this. Now we have to turn it over and grind this side. So let me ask you this. How do we align that side with this side? How do we know that when I come in here with a jig grinder that this hole is directly in line with this hole? Laser beam? Light? Well, we're going to show you how we're going to do it. We've got a trick way of doing it, we think. We made a little tool for it. Sure. And that'll be one of the uh, exercises we'll be able to show you and back these, there. These are called ears? Let's see. Well, I call them an ear. I, do, yeah. you know, it's, I uh, clean my ears with Q-tips. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could use Q-tips in here, too, if you don't get too much ear jam on them. <laughs> so use clean ones, please. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so th this, these are some of the things that we need a jig grinder for, is to make sure that we have this, uh, these ground accurately. And the distance between the center line of this hole and this pad right here have to be within a couple of tenths. So your little tool that you got, that your little trick. Well, that we're going to make a tool for it. Okay, we're so make you, a tool. you don't really count on these sides being perfect. Or, no, you no, no, they have to be perfect too. When before okay. you grind it, this has to be parallel here, has to be square so here. What I'm asking is, so when you flip it, if they're perfect, wouldn't they just line up? Well, how's, how, how does it know? How does it know right to left? Oh. Okay. Front to back it would know because I'm going to be up against an angle plate. Okay. But how does it know right to left? It doesn't know that. It doesn't know that. Because I remember if this is the machine, machine, I was here <laughs> and then I had to turn it over and now I'm way over here. So first time I was here, now I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. now i got to slide it back and forth to get it in line. Get it back in line. How do I get there? So we're going to do a tool. We're going to show you how to do that. Okay. Which is going to be pretty cool. That'll be another one of our videos. So we've got some upcoming videos that we're going to show how to operate the machine. Okay. How the machine operates, rather. We'll start with right. that. Right. What all the functions are of the machine. And then we're going to show how we operate the machine. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we're going to do some videos and showing how we actually grind the do parts. Do I get to play with it? Maybe, if you're a good boy. Might let you do that. Yeah. You're smart enough. You'll be able to figure it out. So that's, I think, where we are going to end it today and pick it up in the next video and show how the machine operates. So keep on trucking. Keep on watching. Tell your friends to subscribe. Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this next series of videos because uh, it's pretty exciting. Nothing out there on, on jig grinding. We couldn't find any videos on not only how to operate it, but how jig grinding is done. We couldn't find anything. So we think that those of you that are curious about the ultimate machine and the accuracies that you can get out of a jig grinder, which are phenomenal, this is going to be very exciting for those of you that are into that sort of precisionness. If you're not, if you're looking at uh, milling a half inch off, or you know, a, a just like a jig video. that's a different jig, jig dancing video. Yeah, right. you know? <laughs> so that's a totally different situation. Yeah. We're not we're not going there. We're going we're going into the micro world, as I, I like to call it. So okay. this is going to be very very cool stuff with extreme accuracy. Don't know how you can get any more accurate than this, short of. Uh, getting into uh, the, the, the telescope itself and looking down at okay. microorganisms. That's about, as, yeah. that's about as close you can get until you get to that level. That's pretty sweet. So, so, don't forget to tell your people to share the videos. Tell them to subscribe. Keep on watching. You're going to be really intrigued by this next set of videos that are coming up, and I know you're going to love them. So keep your comments coming too, folks. We love hearing your comments. We try to subscribe or try to answer each and every one of your comments. Sometimes we can't, but we do our best to answer them. So any questions, any comments, love to hear them. Any suggestions on videos you'd like us to make, let us know. We'll be glad to do them. So thanks for watching and keep on trucking.